It's about six o'clock on Thursday, July 18th. I'm gonna call the regular select board meeting to order. Um, just before we start, uh, I'm just gonna take the, cause I have the gavel, I guess. Um, just say that it's been a pretty rough couple weeks again, just like last year. And I just wanna recognize um, everybody who's been pitching in to try to help the town employees have been working a lot to try to to mitigate whatever whatever they can from the um, wreckage of the flood and I know individuals are doing everything they can and um, yeah just want to acknowledge that we suffered quite a ordeal again anyway moving on um, first thing set adjust agenda nothing Good. Uh, so we're gonna roll with the agenda we have. Communication from the audience. Anyone here to talk about something that's not on our agenda? John, can you state your name? John Lucia. I'm not here to complain, trust me, just relax. That's fine <laughs> if you are. <laughs> just relax. why we're here. Just relax. Now, um, I wanna pass this picture around. This is, that's my house the day after. I mean, the morning after. That's not even as high as the water was that night. And all I'm here to do is to, we need as a town to start being proactive instead of reactive to the floodwaters. By that I mean, if you look across the street at all that vegetation, if I went out the night of the flood and that vegetation was holding the water back on Granite Street until it got to be about three and a half feet high, the vegetation there was so thick that that's when the water finally started going down there. But by that time, the water was all the way down the street because there's only one little opening, just this side of where the old building used to be that Danny Hale leveled out, okay? And that's two feet above Granite Street. But the water was coming so fast that the water was going down past the pavilion. The fire hydrant on the corner by where Duke and Nicole live was completely underwater by about a foot. It was at least three and a half, four feet of water going down Cooper Brook. The state, and I know Opie's been battling with the state on dredging rivers and stuff like that, but they're more concerned about floodplains. What I'd like to see done is clear that vegetation out a lot of it. I know you gotta leave some trees and things like that, but at least clear it out so that when the water comes down Granite Street, it's got a place to go to the left, okay, and drain out back because my house, you see that picture, um, that's the back of my house, and I lost a good three feet of gravel that was underneath the footing, and it went right through my basement, the water did, and came out of so, the Because the current gets so strong after it gets up to about four feet. If that had been open, and even if it only had kept the water level down a foot, my house wouldn't have sustained that foundation there. So we've got, as a town, we've got to start looking at things like doing stuff like that where we can spread that water out. Because once that water right now hits Granite Street from Cooper Brook, it goes all the way down. Now, Helen Willie's here. She's been on that street for 54 years, and she's never had water in her basement until the last two. And it's because the water goes all the way down Granite Street. Linda Bellavance, out on Cottage Street, never had water. She's lived there forever. She had water again in her basement. It's because that water's coming from Cooper Brook, right down Granite Street with nowhere to go. And right by the pavilion, the last two floods, it's washed out half of their driveway. And what's gonna happen is, pretty quick if something's not done, and we keep getting this water, the, the pinnings on the, on the pavilion are gonna start wearing away, and we're gonna lose more. And what I'm really concerned about is if we don't start making some flood plans, we're going to lose, I feel, we're going to lose some businesses in town. Because I don't know how many more times House Pizza can get flooded, or Kenny Williams, or Poolins, or even Lamoille Valley. Lamoille Valley's big enough where, I mean, they had two feet of water in their showroom again. And after a while, they're going to say, we don't need this. We're big enough, we can go somewhere else. One other idea, that I, this probably wouldn't fly, but I don't see why we can't look at draining Hargrave Lake and 
from dredging it because the river, as everybody knows, goes behind the house across from the yellow barn and comes down to the dam. But Hardwick Lake was drained, and, and there's no fish there, there's no, it's not being used for anything. If Hardwick Lake was drained, that would be some tremendous floodplain for the water from the river to go out there and keep it from coming up over its banks. Because, I mean, you all know this, the story with Buddy Hay. And, I mean, we're losing land. We're losing land, and we just can't do that. So all I'm here to say is I, I urge the board to be proactive and look at some of these things. And I wish somebody would come down, if you get a chance, and let's take a look at that, because CAE owns that land, a lot of it that goes around to the corner. And you don't need to take the whole thing down. If you make like a 100-foot strip and just cleaned it out, um, that would make a place for the water to go off the Granite Street. Because the current doesn't get heavy until it gets to about three feet deep. When the water starts coming down the Granite Street, it's just spreading out. So that's why it doesn't have the force to get through the vegetation until it gets to be about three, four feet high. Then it goes over the vegetation. But until then, it's two feet deep. Because my garage, if you guys know where I live, the road rises up. I mean, my driveway rises up to my garage. Now, for the water to reach my garage to go in, it has to be this level all the way across. And it was. And it was. It was good four, four and a half feet deep down Grand Street because it couldn't go into the woods. So I just want to ask the town to just, you know, I mean, take it under advisement, I guess, or whatever. Yeah. We need to be proactive. Uh, Definitely. And I know that you guys are doing everything you can. I know you got to deal with the state, but something like that, we shouldn't have to deal with the state. But I wouldn't think just clearing some vegetation. I don't know. I think I Cooper know. Brook is pretty high on our list, isn't it? We uh, put in a pre application for a study for the Cooper Brook drainage area, and we're looking to make more floodplain. Okay, good. So you're right on. You're right on. You're right on. Yeah. Good. Well, that's because I don't plan on moving. <laughs> we don't want you to no, no, no. Yeah, unless, unless I float away. Right. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. no, thanks for bringing, bringing your concerns. Anyone else? I just want to say what he said and just say I think we need to be proactive. I have a question. Are the regs for the brooks the same as for the rivers? Or can you have more leeway? Mm -hmm. A and R controls all of the regulations in the rivers. Okay. And Can you see anything that's um, a blue line on the map, mm -hmm. and not just like a ditch on the side of the road? And we all know that every rule has its exceptions. And is it time to start lobbying for an exception to this? You know, I mean, it, the time has come two years in a row mm -hmm. after 51 years not having anything. Yeah. And my, my garage sits up higher than John's. And I had five inches in my garage. And at quarter of two, I was going to bed because it had stopped raining and it had not come up my little bank that I sit on. Yeah. At quarter of three, just before going into bed, getting into bed, I looked out. We had to move. We had to evacuate. Yeah. That's how fast it came in once it came up. Yeah, the, the area on Wolka Street uh, the, the, the low-lying area in the riverbed on Wolka Street, um, we have a lot less storage there. Where Because all that sediment from East Hardwick, the inn, right. has washed down into the low-lying area. So our, our storage in the current river channel is less, and that's why it's backing up into Cooper Rock, in my opinion. I'm well, not I think a, so, I'm because we, we know how much has come down. <coughs> vehicles and soot. And trees that are still there that you can see yeah. and the big rocks that are taking up space yeah I can't believe they can't allow us to do something with that I think some of the plan is in, we're, we're having early conversations about um, HED's property on the other side of Wolf uh, on the other side of the Memorial River is creating flood benching in there and creating storage for the water to go and trying to get it to go on the other side of the river into the floodplain and not off the Wolcott Street and Cottage Street and Grand Street. Okay. But that doesn't help with the Cooper Brook. That's, no. a, whole, that's, another, right, that's a whole different story. And I heard you say about a study for Cooper Brook. To my knowledge, these studies can go five years. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is there any way to speed them up? We can surely advocate for that. Yeah. Be nice. <laughs> yeah. The state and, and this area of New England, we're running into a shortage of engineers. We have some here tonight, thankfully. They're going to try to help us out. 
Good. But we put a lot of projects out to, for requests for engineering, and we're the, we don't get any response. Okay. Uh, we're working hard to try to be proactive. And I understand your concerns. I really do. They're, they're my concerns as well. And I appreciate you coming here. Checking yeah. in. Yeah, that's, I'm glad First you did. First time in all my life. <laughs> I'm glad you did. This is this easy. Yeah. No, that's the last time I did this. Oh, thank you. Anyone else want to share anything with the board before we get rolling with our agenda? All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming. Appreciate you sharing. I don't you don't have to leave. Yeah, you don't have to leave. <laughs> we have a riveting we have a riveting no, couple hours ahead of us. No, we'll get involved in something. We could appoint you. We could appoint you or something. Yeah, that's what we're doing. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. All right. Next is select board to approve the minutes of the regular um, meeting from last time, which was June twentieth. Have a motion to approve those. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, any discussion, changes, anything? I thought they looked good. All in favor of approving minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, town manager report, Mr. Upson. Okay, I'll make it quick. Um, so, I want to provide an update about Hayes Service Station. Um, over the course of the last week and a half, um, I've visited many um, state and local officials there. Uh, the most recent was Secretary of a &R yesterday. Um, I got word today that the trans would be taking over um, a, a temporary fix for armoring that, that bank there to prevent any more erosion or um, deterioration of that bank. Um, so there is a, a temporary fix in the works for that, not by our town employees. Um, the transit stuff and so we're hugely thankful for that. Um, we have lost um, one additional bridge uh, where we have five bridges that were affected by the flood, two of which were temporary state bridges and the plan is to move the Hardwick Farms bridge out of um, Porter Brook tomorrow. Um, gravel construction is going to do that work and unbolt a couple sections of that bridge and move it over to Fisher Folly and add those sections onto that bridge so that family can get out. Um, they currently have a rental vehicle from the Ford dealership. Um, and then we're gonna put two eight foot culverts, 40 feet long in the Porter Brook for a temporary crossing there. Um, and that's gonna happen. Hopefully we got permitting for that today and hopefully that's gonna happen next week for the prepping for that, and then we're gonna um, we're gonna receive those culverts. Hopefully, one to three weeks. One to three weeks. Hopefully, one week. Um, so I'll let Tom give you an update on the road. But I just want to talk about the bridge structure, um, and then Riverside Farm. The bridge is completely out. Um, the bridge inspector. We're we're trying to find out if we can re if we can fish the I beams out of the river and put in a temporary deck there if the abutments are good. Um, we, waiting on hearing back from them. Uh, down to our wastewater plant, we received six inches less flood water in the wastewater plant. Um, the, our variable frequency drives on our blowers were spared by inches. Um, those are pretty expensive process control equipment. Um, we removed the motors in each of the new blowers. Um, we had one of them serviced and returned um, quickly. We have one blower in operation for both lagoons. Our DOs are low in the lagoons right now um, just because of the construction work and refilling the lagoons. So we're trying to get as much air into the lagoons as we can. The other two motors are Farrell Electric in Morseville and they should be back um, they should be back early next week or maybe even tomorrow. Um, and those will be installed, we'll get the air on. We're currently bypassing with a temporary diesel pump out of our wet well to directly to the lagoons. Um, our influent, three influent pumps were submerged and our variable frequency drives, we found out today that we're all cooked by floodwaters. So we have to put, um, we have to put new drives in, uh, drives that we just replaced. 
um, and we're going to install them in the cabinet that we had removed um, higher up. So we're going to try to get those out of harm's way. Um, the lift stations, we had to replace start starters in two of the pumps on the Buffalo Street lift station. And uh, um, Route 14 South lift station is running in hand um, because, and we're going to have to do a repair there. Um, I'd like to do a, a, a big overhaul there and just spend the money and do it. But that's, that's in rough shape right now, too. Running in hand means by. We just have to go pump it out. Right? Yeah. 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 But it pumps, like, you can turn the pump on and it pumps where it's supposed to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're not, you're not having to truck it? Or, no. Okay. No, we did truck it for a day and a half. Yeah. Um, the standby generator was flooded again. Um, we're going to have gate salvage drain the oil out and try to get that going just so we have it. Um, and I think that's it for the wastewater plan for now. Um, Governor Scott met me down there last Thursday, so that was good. Um, I know they're working hard to try to get uh, to help Johnson, Hardwick, and Ludlow with their wastewater treatment facility problems. Um, we are good to, we sent in um, the paperwork to have, uh, to be able to blast in our gravel pit. Right. Um, per the emergency declaration. Um, so next we're preparing uh, sites to blast for, uh, for material. Um, we rented an excavator for a month from Pete's Equipment in Morseville. Um, and we're gonna start preparing locations to blast and hopefully a blasting company will be in next week. We'll be able to get some good solid material. Um, I'm gonna talk to V Trans and probably for the Squirrel and Craftsbury to see if, if they have any need to cost share with the blasting. We probably have plenty of need ourselves. We do. So, but we gotta help each other out. Though. True. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's it for now, I guess. I'll let Tom go. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, so thank you, and we'll move on to Tom. And I don't want to steal all this thunder. You already did, so I'm also. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so update. Uh, it took us a couple of days, but we ended up getting everybody out, except for, of course, the Fish Valley Bridge. Uh, the folks all over there. Uh, this week, uh, we ended up replacing a five or a four-foot culvert that was damaged on that road with a uh, five, five foot culvert. Uh, so we got that finished up today. Uh, Cape Brook Road, we got that widened back out. Uh, so that's back to well, what I call a lane and a half road anyways. Uh, but a lot of stonework needs to be done up there because a lot of the road got uh, eaten out by the riverbank there or the road itself. Uh, the upper part of Tucker Brook is still closed. Uh, gravels ended up going over to Smith Farm Road and making a path up through there so they can get out last week. Uh, so that's open. Uh, where else? The underpass up in uh, Greensboro Bend. Mm -hmm. That's our part. Uh, that's a mess up there with the bridge collapse and everything else up there. Uh, we managed to go around and do some of the punch list, uh, but the small washouts like over in East Harvey and Center Road and all those, we get those winding back out. The banks off stone back. Uh, next week, uh, uh, Opie was just talking to me about trying to get up to uh, Greensboro Bend so they can try to get up there to do their part. So we'll be up in the bend next week, uh, trying to put the retaining wall back, probably, or at least some of it back, and uh, just to dig the road up and pack it back in so they can get in there with that. Um, besides that, we're going to have to concentrate afterwards back on uh, Tucker Brook and the armoring of uh, Cape Brook Road. And we still have a carrier road that's out again like it was before by the, by the bridge. And a small few of other small washouts here and there we've got to deal with. But all in all, everything's going good. Uh, got a pile of culverts over at the garage right now, so we can replace them up uh, on some uh, Cape Brook Road and Tucker Brook. I got a new six foot culvert coming. That's going to go on Nickel Grove there, uh, where, where we met Eric, right there, where we've got a oh, yeah. narrow path right now. So this is only like a three foot, oh, really? four foot culvert in there. Uh, so we're going to double the size of that and see if we can't do away with some of the problem there, even though 
the road up around the corner, I think we've got a seven foot culvert in there and that's not taken in. But uh, hopefully that has been ordered, so hopefully we can get that in here within the next couple of weeks. But so far, about that. So, plug in one. I just have a logistical question. Yeah. So before the last week's flood, we were starting to um, think about some of the changes from last year's flood that we needed to make to roads, like upsizing culverts and doing box culverts and things like that. Obviously, this past flood is a reminder of that we need to be upsizing and doing that work. I'm just wondering about the time. I know it's a tricky position to be waiting for the state geologist and those recommendations. Do we have a sense of the, the, the hydrologic studies? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Because um, a lot of these are like whatever we have, so we can get people in and out. Just thinking about like part of farms is drivable that culvert, but eventually we want to be replacing it with something permanent. Well, it's gonna Dave, Dave just put out an RFP on on that yeah. for for the So I guess that's my question: Is are we starting to mm -hmm. we're starting to to John's point about being proactive? Yeah. We now have that information, so we're going to start to be doing that upsizing. And that yeah. We don't have it for everything, right? No. no. Okay. I mean, this is going to be years. Yeah, of course. It, it just uh, I think there's only maybe one or two guys that go go around and do all the, all this hydraulic study throughout the whole yeah. state. We can pay to have the hydraulic study yeah. done. And that's I mean, what we're doing. That's what the RFI request or the RFP requested. So that's a full package deal. They they design, give us stamp plans, and we put in that box culvert. It's going to be a box culvert, the bottomless box culvert, like the one upstream and downstream. Right. Yeah. Because most of these box culverts we're going to be doing. I mean, if it if the town wants to sacrifice their money without waiting for you know FEMA to come through and hydraulic studies. We're looking here where it's probably from two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars speech for each one of these bonds. Right. Right. So it's a part it's a part of my question at point is that we're we're in a bit of a bind because we have to in order to Right, either the, either town sacrifices and pay for the entire stuff themselves or else we have to wait. Right. And we know how slow FEMA is and everything else. Because we're still dealing with some of the FEMA stuff from last year. What was it? Just two, three weeks ago, I had to go around the GPS all the culverts we we uh, replaced. Well, we fixed that. We put the locate. We turned the location on. It doesn't years. work unless yeah. you have service. Yeah. <laughs> Down that uh, so we're we're on to, to add to Tom's comments. We're we're figuring out where we can cut corners, and I don't mean it in a negative way, but we're figuring out how we can um, we can ask for certain things and do other things and get ahead. We're, we're pushing to get us as far ahead as possible within the constraints we have. Thank you. <coughs> and thanks to you and your crew for all the work over the last week. Yeah, it's a lot. Cool. Um, next up is the Police Department report, Mike Henry. I'm going to make mine quick because I see the agenda already. It's busy. Um, we're just uh, working on training and that type of stuff. Uh, I wanted to introduce one of our newest officers, uh, her name is Robin French. Robin will be, uh, she's gone through the level two certification. She's working on that right now. And on August 5th, she'll be going in for the level three certification, which is 17 weeks long uh, down to the end. So uh, things are going well. I just wanted to introduce her to the Welcome, Robin. Thank you. Nice to meet everybody. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Lots of training, lots of learning. Yeah. Doing lately, and uh, Chief Henry's been fantastic. So Great. thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your community. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. But thank you. You know, everything's been going great. So we're really, uh, really pleased with everything that she's been doing this So uh, I'm just going to leave it there. Great. That's a. <laughs> That's a very uh, nice report, and it's great to have you, great to have you on board. Um, all right, next, Hardwick Electric Department report. We have Lynn Gedankin here. Hello, Lynn. Hello, everyone. Um, just a few things. We have hired two apprentices, which is a start. We still need to attract uh, journeymen to the team, but we're making progress. Uh, in terms of the flood, our current estimates are in the range of $500,000 to $700,000 worth of damage. We've had some serious damage to the grid as well as to Wolcott Hydro. 
Oh, um, woke it again? I'm sorry? Again? Again, yes. Yeah. Well, not the controls, because controls are eight oh, feet up yeah. now, but uh, it flooded the turbine, which had just been put back in. So it's now got to be pulled out and cleaned and inspected, and hopefully that's all that needs to be done to it. The pen stop was dislodged, so that needs to be inspected and make sure <coughs> that it is not damaged. Um, so we're all of that is, you know, it's it's yeah. Groundhog Day all over again. Oh. Um, so yeah, so that's. Um, and we, um, we understand that, that the counties that we're in have been declared um, a disaster area. And I don't know so that. that. We will be able to get FEMA funds. I don't know the look on your face, Opie, is you haven't heard. That's what Scott's note to me said, so. Um, That's news to us. Okay. okay, well, I hope it's good news and that it is accurate. Yeah. Um, what well, would be good news? You can, but count, you can, you can count on it, it, it happening, but I just haven't heard. I've gotten mixed reports. Okay, this was, that was what Scott heard. Yeah. So um, I don't have firsthand knowledge mm -hmm. of that, but anyway, it would be good news. Um, we are in the process of hiring a new general manager. We have gotten in a number of resumes that are interesting. We've started interviewing, uh, doing screening interviews, and we look forward to having the chair and the town manager join us when we go to the next round of, of interviews. Um, but uh, we're very encouraged. Great. And uh, for those of you who may not know, we now have a Facebook page. Oh boy. <laughs> um, I have a hundred and, I want to say, I think last month there were 140 some followers, so people are um, looking on the page. There's a, and there's, we had information about outages. It, it, we're in the 21st century, you know, and, uh, but uh, people should check it out. And when, when you do go out, look on the page. There might be some information there. Um, not that we want anybody to have an outage, but it does unfortunately happen. Uh, and we've begun to uh, start the process in the very preliminary stages of our integrated resource plan, which is a 30-year plan that we have to do every three years, I believe, an update. Um, that will be submitted in May, so there's, there's some time to go through the process, and we'll have more on that. Um, so that's... That's the report. That's the report. Any questions? Questions for Lynn? I'm bummed about the Wolka Hydro. I, uh, I'm sorry. I said I'm bummed about the Wolka Hydro. I read in in the I think the manager report before you meet here. Some somewhere I read that it was going to go in, and it was just the week before the flood. I think. Yeah. It the did. turbine went in. It did. Yeah. It did go in, and then it got and flooded, flooded again. Yeah. A week later. Yeah. yeah. No. The, so the the. The turbine was flooded, the road needs to be repaired. I mean, the road's the least of it, it's not yeah. that big a road. Um, but um, the big uncertainty is really the penstock and uh, condition of the turbine. And so right. that's, that's what we're... And that generates like 10 to 15% of our power when it's running annually. When it's running. Yeah. When it's running. Yeah. Um, it's running. that it weren't in operation yet, so hopefully it weren't. That's true. If it was not, yeah. I mean, maybe that it wasn't actually in operation will have limited the damage to the turbine. I honestly don't know. I, yeah. I, 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 maybe, but we could hope. Maybe because it would, wouldn't have been sucking things right. in. So, I mean, it's, maybe. it's possible, but it could, it could have limited the damage. I, I, you know, it's. Yeah. Just a, we just don't know. Um, and I don't want to. Yeah. Speak in advance about something that I don't know. Got it. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Appreciate the thank report. You. Does anybody else have questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. Moving on, number item one is select board to review and consider uh, approving the FY25 tax rate presented by Tanya Chase, clerk and treasurer. Um, where are you? Oh, there you are. Hiding behind Hi. Tommy. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I just don't have it. I saw it in our 
online packet, but I'm not seeing it yet. Before that? All right. Yeah. So we better discuss it a little bit first. We could make a motion and then discuss. That's what we're supposed to do anyway. We just always do it that. Where's the number? The final one is the page that's half a page. Oh, I'm sorry. We don't have that. So do I just need to say? Uh, Hang on, it's coming. So I can tell as you're looking at passing it around. So it went up. Um, the right, but I want to make a motion. To, okay. So what's the rate? And then we just so the total tax rate for residential is three point five two one two, and for non-residential, the total tax rate is 3.6065. So I make the motion that we set the tax rate for 2024-2025, for residential at 3.5212, and for non-residential at 3.6065. Second. All right, so you want to tell us a little about this, Tanya? It looks like the grand list has gone up a bit. The grand list went up a bit. The education tax rate went up a lot. Um, the municipal went up 10.5. The education for percent. Home, percent. Yeah. Education for homestead went up 12.99 percent, and non 16.5 percent. It's a big increase. It's a big increase. Yeah. So with all the math, the, re the total percentage up for residential is 11.9 for non 13.9 percent. Yeah. Although it's huge, it's it's not as bad as some times in some places I've heard, so I mean that's not good news. No, it's huge. It's, it, but it's still huge. But. Yep, and uh, I guess the other thing to note is when we get at this, when we're at this point in the year, the voters have already approved the budget back at town meeting. Right, so it's the budget, the budget appropriations. Right, and so what we're really doing is, um, Tanya's done the math, we assume it's done right, Check it three times. She checked. <laughs> and, um, and so, like, this is the rate we need to set in order to meet the budget that was approved. So. And so the reappraisal will be for 25 26? Yes. We just got to get through this year. Right. No, I was just and everything should level up. <coughs> well, sure. hopefully. Well, Gosh dang it. Yeah, things will level out. I think That's things right. are cheaper. Is that what you think? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Opie said. Okay. Opie said. All right. Uh, hey, no more floods. Yeah, holy cow. Um, all right, any more discussion about uh, the tax rate? All in favor of approving the tax rate, rate as read out previously, please say aye. 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 And that's everyone, so motion carries. Also, I want to point out that when you get your tax bills this year, they won't be on red paper. It'll just Okay. It's a lot less expensive. Oh, all right. all right. So, good. We're saving a little bit of money. Right. Like it. Thank you. Um, all right. So, next is item two, select board to review and approve the annual internal finance controls checklist. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Are there any changes? Yes. The one change was, um, has there ever been a theft or unauthorized use of temp funds or equipment? Uh, end of May, the library had around $40 stolen from their cash box. That's the change. I motion that we approve the annual internal financial controls checklist for 2024. Oh, thank you. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. It looks like there's only one signature on this, that's me. Yep. And today's. All right, thank you. 
Next is item three, select board to consider approving a manufacturing cannabis license for Green Mountain Scientific, transfer from another town, and a mixed one, mixed tier one small cultivator renewal for all Bliss cannabis. Um, so it looked like these are in process for the state review already, right? Yep. Yep. They're existing, or one of them is existing. Right. No violations. Right. And the other one's just a transfer. Could we have a motion? A to motion to approve. Yeah. Uh, manufacturing cannabis license for Green Mountain Scientific. And it makes tier one small cultivated renewal for all this cannabis LLC. A second. And a second from Tim. Uh, any discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item four, select board to consider appointing Robin French as the Hardwick police officer, as a Hardwick police officer, and we've already met Robin, so. Yeah. Oh, you're too slow. <laughs> she probably had to go back to work. She left. Yeah. She left. Yeah. Well, I've seen her. Sorry. That's okay, that was great. We, we already met her, so, um, but we do need to make the appointment. I would like to motion to appoint Robin French as, the, as a Hardwick police officer. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Thanks very much for bringing her. Uh, all right. All in favor? Um, <laughs> all in favor of appointing Robin French? Please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. And yeah. thanks again, so Robin. Full time. Full time uh, in uh, training. Will be. No, she's will be. Into the academy. Yeah. She, she's. Gone through the level two. She's still working on the level two. That takes almost six months to get to level two. But in the process, on August 5th, she'll be starting the level three certification, 17 years long, and then I'll tell you about that. Yeah, we're good. Good, good. good. And it sounds like she's happy to be here, which is great. Phenomenal. Awesome. Yep, I've seen her out. Uh, I think I've been training with somebody there, uh, doing things together in communities. All right, uh, next is item five, zoning administrator. Kristen, I think you came in over there behind the television. Um, to present the select board with the LVRT loop recommendations from. Okay. I have an app on So this. I just came to listen. Okay. We don't. You have the list. Yeah, you have the list. Yeah, so there's recommendations, and um, these things are all. It, my recollection of that loop from way back is that it, the idea is that we loop people around by the pedestrian bridge. Right. right. Yes, so it yes. seems. So, yeah. so, okay. So, we, um, backing up to uh, the grant that we got, one of the, you've heard the super, I know, it's one of the USDA grants that we got for the bridge. Mm -hmm. I was, I'm sorry, we got it for the trail initially. This was a um, community facilities grant that we got to finish the trail once the state took over the trail. We negotiated with USDA to keep the money um, to go toward the pedestrian bridge. But one of the, the kind of the, the key was it had to still have some tie to its original purpose. The grant still had to be tied to its original purpose. So piece of the money, relatively small piece of the money, I think it's about $9,000, $8,000 maybe. Um, was set aside to create a safe route, the safest route possible for people coming off the LVRT to get to downtown Hartwick, which was and will utilize the pedestrian bridge once the pedestrian bridge is back. Um, the Planning Commission uh, had already presented, I believe, to this life board uh, the yeah. and all, all the items that were going to go into that group. And I believe that already went before you and got accepted. Um, most of that can't happen yet. Uh, the bridge isn't there. This pavement is going to get torn up. So a lot of the painting that was going to happen can't happen. Like, the point of painting of the pavement is going to get torn up. The library construction is interfering with some of what was going to happen. But there's a sense in the Planning Commission. Tell me if I'm wrong. No, I'm listening I'm, and I shouldn't be speaking for the Planning Commission. But no. um, that it would be still helpful to give some people some guidance who are coming into town right here. We, I, I discovered some people kind of, let's say, resting in the Memorial Park the other day. 
they were watching their friends' bikes, who had, the friends had walked downtown to the co-op. Um, there's still no place to like park a bike up there. Or lock a bike. Or lock a bike. So, uh, so the Planet Commission is interested in trying to do some pieces of that loop and provide some guidance to people to get them downtown safely. Um, and so the items on the list that's in your packet are things that they'd like to move forward with. The bike racks are, are, were all in that original um, proposal that you saw. One of them would be up here at the Memorial Park. One would be, help me with this, one would be... Same places. All the same places. places. They're, they're outlined in the, mm -hmm. in the chart. Um, the, 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 new, the new piece is uh, to create some temporary signage, kind of like the parking P that we have sitting out there right now, so those long signs, you know, we can get them made in Morrisville, um, to give some basic directional information, like trailhead, this way, um, downtown, that way, uh, walk, uh, walking, well, they're all on this, okay. they're on the, on so the there's a list right of now. what the words of the, tr of the yeah. temporary signage would be. And um, they would be placed along the route as necessary to give people a heads up. The people who stopped here, for instance, didn't know that the trailhead is actually a little bit further down and that there's a bike rack there. So, you know, so they're just like camped out here lying around <laughs> the grass. You know, there's just like little directional clues that we could be giving people at least on a temporary basis. And that's, that's the piece of this that um, is different from what you've seen before. So all the suggestions are the same. It just expanded upon the signage to go to temporary because of the, this year's um, circumstances and to reflect the fact that we're already seeing lots of people coming through advice. Another piece of this is that, oh, I'm sorry. Were you about to say something? Uh, I'm just, so there's a loop that was defined. It's funded through the the grant and it'll be implemented when the bridge is in and so I'm, I'm just trying to clarify what it is that, that that the select board needs to either discuss or decide tonight because I'm a little confused about that I don't know personally I think this is mostly informational so okay we've already approved much of but what's here but the sign, the little temporary signs are a diff they're a change. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is only for a piece of the loop, since the loop that you know, the piece of the loop that goes to the bridge doesn't exist yet. But this is the piece that just brings them down on mm -hmm. North Main Street, which mm -hmm. was part of that original mm -hmm. loop as well. And so it's just creating some directional stuff. I, again, I shouldn't speak for the planning commission. No. I was just coming to listen. I'm sorry. But they I'm wanted sorry. you to know that they would like to do this, and I guess just make sure that if there wasn't any. So I'll finish it up, how's that? Yeah. You have recommendations from the Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. It'd be lovely if you could accept them and and authorize us to move forward with them because there is a ton of pot of money for them. And they've amended the, the suggestions they made earlier to reflect the circumstances currently with the uh, um, library and the taking and repaving, et cetera. Does that make sense of a, what? And we're, there's a delay on the wayfinding signage from the train. Yes, that's yes. right. So, so this is, there's a whole sign package that the trans wants to put up, and they said late, late summer, early fall. Oh. So there That's will be signs far. coming that say there's a trailhead, <laughs> but they aren't, they don't exist it's, yet. It's really for, oh, cool. for so close. <laughs> no, he was so straight out there. It's really for um, people coming in vehicles. This way finding would be for bikers to find the data. Yeah. So. Trying to assist the downtown. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. And it's amended from the recommendations that you guys yep. made last year, yep. so it, they thought that it would be good to resend it to you. Yeah, I guess. I, mean, I don't know. At the plan, the plan commission, it's spearheading it. But you guys make the decisions on the on point right. four. Yeah. These are recommendations from the planning commission, mm -hmm. not recommendations from I think that was a max. He's, uh, Danny's asking about the number of sites. I, mm -hmm. I doubt that there will be that many. It was just sort of came like, up with a max. It was that's kind of a max amount. I'm guessing there won't actually need to be that many. Well, the whole point no, of having a temporary, temporary signage so that we can use them in the future if someone else. Yeah, they're all fun. reusable. <laughs> and we put all of them out at once. Let's do it. Okay, good. Make a motion. I do only have just one. And I don't have the original proposal in front of me, sorry, but the, just a really good question about the Peace Park, knowing that that's used a lot by the Civic, 
and there's not a lot of space in that I think area. we identified one spot already. You did? And, okay. and any decisions about that would be made in, in communication okay. with all the, all the stakeholders of the Peace Park. Okay. Cool. That. <laughs> there were some conversations last time. This is, I think this is, yeah, this is over a year old, yeah. which is the other reason it's coming back to you to, to just get it to go forward. Yeah, I mean, it's fine with me. I, I don't mind. I mean, it's all fine. It seems to me that people, most people, there are an awful lot of bikers downtown there are, this summer, and, you know, and they're I, finding I their way. Tell you, Eric, mm. I ran into like a woman with a, with a child behind her, and she said, I wish I had known that I should probably walk my bike. So that was where that came from. Like, there's construction ahead. Like, knowing, mm. like, some people, they're focused on their kids when they're coming off that trail. They're not looking at the fact that there's construction going on down there. Yeah, it's fine. So, yeah, it's fine. I mean, they are getting down. I yeah. think that I mean, you can the see idea is to give them more information about what to expect. There's some signs that say walking with bike recommended or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, That's fine. Like that. Do you want to make a motion? No. Somebody needs to, can somebody make a motion that we approve the package and... So moved. Thank you. Second. All right. More discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's everybody. Motion carries. Sounds good, thank you. Next, uh, item six is select board to discuss the river program with NVDA representatives. And I know we have Dave Snedeker here. Oh, sorry, I should. Also, the state yeah. so I can be seen, I guess. Yeah. So, hi, I'm Dave Snedeker, director of the Northeastern Vermont Development Association. We're the regional planning and development corporation uh, for Hardwick and all of the Northeast Kingdom. So, uh, we're here tonight to introduce the river initiative to the select board. Uh, also with me tonight is uh, Bruce Melendi. He's our emergency management coordinator from NVDA. And then we have some consultants who I'll let them introduce himself here in a second. So the River Initiative, and I can never remember the full name, but think about recovery and resiliency with the, or the two R's. And uh, the genesis of the initiative was to assist towns that were impacted uh, significantly in last year's flooding. And in our region, those towns happen to be uh, Barton with its two villages, Glover and Hartwick. And we've had an early conversation with uh, David and Kristen and uh, Tracy uh, to talk a little bit about what we're doing. And then we're here tonight to introduce the initiative to you. Uh, NVDA's role is sim simply to assist with convening public meetings to get uh, broad public input into the initiative. Uh, but the big bulk of the work is going to be working with our consultants. We have uh, Justin Rabideau from Stantec and Erica Borman uh, behind me, and who used to be with the Vermont Emergency Management. So um, I'll just turn it over to them and let them speak. I think Je David was out with Justin today, I believe. So mm -hmm. I'll let you guys take it. Thank you. Um, stand, sit. As you like. Thanks, Dan. Um, Justin Rabideau uh, with Stantec. And we, are, we have been retained by two, the Two Rivers Commission. And NVDA is acting on behalf of Two Rivers um, here in Hardwick to help facilitate, as David mentioned. And our goal in this process, along with Erica's team from AC Disaster Consulting, is to help communities prepare applications for FEMA funding. And what that entails is the assistance with the community in soliciting, prioritizing projects, and eventually advancing a running those selected projects through FEMA's benefit cost analysis program which is a pretty uh, black and white, cut and dry, very empirical program in which FEMA uses as, a, uses as a basis for determining what projects they consider eligible for funding. And you're all pretty well versed in, in this, this effort from this year and last year. So I won't go into all the various things that can happen with properties and riverbanks and because I, um, in talking with the staff here, you folks I, I seem to be well well on your way in your, your level of understanding. Um, so we would then use the result of the conceptual and preliminary design phases along with that benefit cost information to advance projects that uh, kind of meet two criteria. One, the community supports and by the community, uh, the legislative body. And two, um, projects that we can then get into the application phase. And the, the money that Two Rivers has available for this round, and there's all different pots of money, and Erica is certainly an expert um, on, uh, with, with, in her role with Vermont Emergency Management on both this pot of money and, and other monies that might be available. 
But our, our main priority is to assist communities in getting applications into FEMA. From that point, and now, and this is a 2024 effort, and from that point, as um, I heard some discussions earlier, uh, you won't be surprised to hear that FEMA takes all the entirety of the applications within the declared area. Probably in 2025, they would, they would consider awards, and then in 2026, these projects that were funded through this program would get FEMA funds and hopefully be underway. And that cuts that kind of the catch-22 aspect of the program where if you choose to be eligible for the program, you're following the program's rules, or you can spend local resources um, and take some time off the clock. However, a lot of the projects we were you know, considering today, um, whether you're talking about upsizing culverts, certainly the, you know, well in those six figures, or, or installing box culverts, or some of the floodplain work, or some of the bank restoration, um, that I witnessed today, these are going to be large dollar figure projects and that's, that's the role that FEMA, um, that's where they can assist communities in, in the affordability and the funding of these projects. So we will continue to work with communities and, and with your staff, with your manager, to identify those projects, advance the ones that you want us to advance, and assist you in the application phase in this fall. Um, Erica, you probably have some yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll just add Erica Borneman. Um, I uh, am on the Stantec team, and I, I used to be the director of uh, Vermont Emergency Management, who is, of course, up to their eyeballs and floods, uh, as you are. Um, the, the real goal of this program is capacity building, because uh, one, of the, one of the big gaps after last year's floods, especially knowing that there was upwards of about $90 million in hazard mitigation grant program funding that was going to be available. Was quick, they quickly understood that um, you know, some, some of the barriers to this program, especially for towns that don't have the resources to, um, to procure them, are the engineering resources and the, uh, the design resources. So that's really the goal of Vermont Emergency Management in, in building this program was so that there are some already pre-designated resources to get your hazard mitigation applications to the best place possible so that FEMA doesn't need to do all of the back and forth that they normally need to do um, when they receive applications that are missing information or, or what have you. Um, so, you know, I know the timeline that Justin talked about is, um, is frustrating. Believe me, I was frustrated by FEMA's timelines for 16 years at VEM, and I continue to be frustrated by FEMA's timelines in my current role. Um, but I, I'm, I'm really optimistic about this, about this program, about the approach, um, because I think it makes FEMA's job really easy to approve really good projects that are going to reduce uh, the risk in your town. So. Um, we're, we're, we're super happy to be here and to be supporting the Regional Planning Commission and to be supporting the town. Yeah, they're, they're really streamlining it. They, they want yeses to arrive on their doorstep, and, and that's really the goal of this newer process. Um, so I, I know I did mention the, the act of prioritizing projects. One thing that is of importance and of note is that's going to leave a whole lot of projects in all communities that don't make it to the top of a list. We still want to hear what those projects are, and, we've, and frankly, we've already heard here in Hartman what those projects are. The, the volume, the totality of all the damage is very important for us to kind of ring the bell on for the Vermont Emergency Management FEMA folks. So they know it's not just these three or four projects that, that need addressing. And I think they do, but it's, it's one thing to know it however many miles away these folks are. It's, you know, it's another thing to kind of have it put in front of them. That's right. <laughs> and uh, if, if I could, I want to indirectly respond to one of the comments earlier about, you know, how can you shortcut process or regulatory concerns? Um, those of us that were working in this line of business after Hurricane Irene, or Tropical Storm Irene, excuse me, um, the state's ability to implement the construction projects they did and the time on, timeline they did was only achievable because the administration got together with the regulators. And it, they didn't necessarily tell them not to regulate, but they made it very clear the excitation was these improvements were going to be made as fast as humanly possible. And if you compare those, a lot of those major Irene repair timelines to what a standard project in a normal year would be, 
They were two to three to four times faster. So these, these, these incidents, these disasters do present opportunities, I think, for the administration to kind of flex their heft a bit. They've done it before. Um, I, so, I see no reason why they, they won't do it again, especially if they hear from elected folks, from mm -hmm. your municipal leaders, from your representative, your, your legislatures down in Montpelier. Um, it was very effective then. I know it's, it doesn't quite get at the goal of being proactive. It's like it's more being more reactive. But seeing as this is where we are in the process, I'm really hopeful that we can see a lot of these projects implemented without, with as little of that bureaucratic kind of red tape as possible. So I just wanted to add that to an earlier conversation. Thanks, and thanks for uh, coming. Uh, so it sounds like you guys are already in contact and you've already been around. Yeah, I mean, if I, if I can say the, yeah. the, um, the Hardwick team here is really well positioned to advance the projects. The, the information they've provided us with, the format it's been in, um, there's no moss growing around here, so you should be you know, very appreciative of the hard work that's been done by I'm sure all of you, not just some of the folks that are emailing us directly. It's, um, you, know, you certainly see a little bit of difference elsewhere and the hard work is definitely out the barn big time. So it makes it a lot easier for us when you have a committed community that already knows what they want to do and already knows what they need to do. And, is, and in as, as much contact. Heck, we walked around for an hour today and we weren't, we weren't going four feet without these folks having conversations with people. So, you know, I think there's an extra level of, of, level of connectivity here that really helps the community. Yeah, we are, we are very, very grateful and thankful for our staff. So. Uh, yeah, great. Thank you. So thank you. Um, I'm glad you're working with us. Yeah, it sounds like it's a thing to do. I mean, it doesn't matter what Phoenix timeline is, right? We got to do everything we can. If you give them the, the good answers, you, you're going as fast as we can. That's all you can do. Okay, so that's what we're here to do. But the yeah. back and forth is that uh, will take a lot more time. Okay. So you'll be seeing and hearing more of us. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Um, all right. Thank you for coming. You're yeah. Welcome. Appreciate it. Do you want to? We're good. Okay. All right, I'm going to move us along. Thank you for coming. You don't. You don't have to leave. It's an open meeting. We encourage everyone to stay. I know. It's beautiful out. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> Item seven is select board to consider reappointing Norma Wiesen and Ben Bonier, I'm not sure if that's correct pronunciation, to a four year term in the Hardwood Conservation so Commission. Second. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you to people serving on the Conservation Commission. Next item eight, select board to consider appointing Reno Demers for a three-year term and Roger Prevo for a two-year term as Hardwick Electric Commissioners. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, Can I just, just so this is a phonetic thing, but they are being reappointed, right? Yep, they, they are. are. They're both on okay. the board. Right. Yep, they're both being reappointed. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And thank you very much to those serving on the Hardwick Electric Commission. Um, next is uh, item nine, select board to consider reappointing Jim Lewis and Michael Havison to three-year terms on the Hardwick Planning Commission. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, and thanks to everybody on the Hardwick Planning Commission. Next, item 10, select board to consider reappointing Ruth Galliard and Helm Notterman for three-year terms on the Hardwick Development Review Board. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, and thanks to those serving on the DRB. Can I just ask a really quick question about all this, too? I don't know if Amanda has this, but I assume, are all of those committees filled with these? Do we know that? I don't. 
I think there's openings on the planning commission, aren't there? No. Nope. No? DRB, I think, maybe. Oh, DRB? Okay. Maybe DRB, but not planning commission. Planning commission's full? That's good. Yeah, that's extra. Extra. Conservation People. commission is full. Carbon electric. Is, is yeah. full. Yep. Okay, so maybe the DRB has a. We don't. Not, well, not positive, but okay. they did it at one point, have a couple. Okay. We could, yeah, we could review the website. All right, next item 11 select board to review and consider approving the coin drop request for 2024. Motion to for this year. Point drop request for a year. It's actually, actually it's 2025. We just That's didn't, right. it didn't get yeah. changed on that. Though. Right. 2025. Yep. Good. Caught your rating time. Second. <laughs> oh, you read it. I read it. I'll oh, it's on page. All right. Oh, good for I read you. The right page. Yeah. Yes. So we had a second. Any discussion about the coin drop? So we have one open month. August. If somebody wants August, they should get in touch with the town offices. August of 2025. Correct. Okay. Uh, well, so now I'm confused because we got coin drop requests for 2025, but we got 2024 dates. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's what we just covered. They just no, but on the left, the so it doesn't May 2024. Somebody's gonna update it. Yeah, yeah it's just okay. It's all 2025. Is it FY25? All right, so all in favor of approving the coin drop schedule, please say aye. 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 Any, <laughs> any opposed? Motion carries. Next, item 12, select board to consider appointing Abra Griggs to the equity committee. So moved. Are there open seats on the equity committee too? Uh, I don't yes, know. so Abra would be, uh, so we have three seats open if you decide to appoint Abra. Uh, does anyone want a second Danny's motion? Sure, second. Um, does, uh, yeah, does Abra, uh, this is not a reappointment, this is a new appointment? This is a new appointment. And has Abra been to meetings? Yep, and uh, there should have been a letter put in the There was a letter. Yep. Um, so Abra has been to a couple of meetings. Uh, she's been really involved in the community and she just started a position at AWARE. Oh, okay. So oh, right, so that's a letter. In, yep. In that. Great. We're so happy who, to have her. Who is on the equity committee now? Uh, so currently there's myself, um, David O'Brien, uh, Jan Mueller, and Amy Rosenthal are all on the committee. And then there are three open spots. If you decide to appoint, you know, there will be three open spots. Okay. There's so. After that. So, all in favor of appointing Abra Griggs? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, I'll abstain. You're abstaining. Um, and that's everybody. Motion carries with one abstention. Next is uh, item 13, select board to review and approve the audit engagement letter with Sullivan Powers and Company for FY24 audit services. Yeah, so. These are the two. Uh, so moved. Great. Second. Excellent. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've had the discussion many times. Yeah. We have. It is what it is. It's it is what have. it is. All right. Uh, yeah, so any discussion on that at all? Or All right. All in favor of approving uh, Sullivan and Powers? Um, Aye. Uh, Aye. Proposal. Aye. All right. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, select board to consider approving a three-year collective bargaining police contract with New England PBA. Um, so this was in our online yep. packet, um, and, and I said it on two or three meetings. So yes, yeah. it's fair. It looks. I just yeah. looked through it. It looked fair to me. Yeah, people are happy with it. No changes from what we talked about originally. Right? No, so it is. We clarified a couple of things. Right. language. Yeah. yeah, there's a bunch of language clarifications in there. But I will say there was great discussion on how we could improve things in retention and what was the other issue, but we didn't, didn't make any changes, but training. training. Ongoing needs, retention and training. All right. Well, we're you know, worried about finding officers and retaining officers. Right. What can we do? You know, right. We had a great discussion about that, actually. Mm -hmm. A motion to approve the three-year collective bargaining uh, contract with New England PBA. 
Can, do you want to authorize? And, and authorize. And authorize. Mm -hmm. Sign. Sign. Yep. With blood. Uh, so we have a motion <laughs> to approve the um, collective bargaining agreement with him for the town manager to sign on behalf of the town. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you to those who were involved in getting that done, and thanks to our uh, police officers. Um, next, item 15, select board to review and consider approving sale of real estate policy. Thank you. Somehow. I'm signing it. It was a little softer. <coughs> I somehow didn't find this. I read it in the email, but I didn't see it. I didn't have it. So Casey's, it was, Casey said she was going to put it in the... Google folder, but was it in there? I didn't see it. I signed it too. I think we all sign it. I don't know. Um, just I mean, a quick clarification for the Sullivan Powers, we all sign it. Yeah, oh, okay. Three lines. okay. Yeah, I think we're a three person so board. Get uh -huh. Does it, if it wasn't in the folder, do we need to wait or can we just talk about the Well, I read it draft. in the email draft. Okay. So yep. I'm just good with it. I mean, it's basically so like the same thing. thing. Uh, yeah, we just sign changes? it down there yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. what we said, you know, what we meant. Either way, it, it was basically said the same thing, a little bit softer. Okay, I just didn't, it wasn't in our folder and I didn't somehow see it. Let's push this to next time. Yeah, okay, good idea. Pushing it. Okay. Next. I left the fact that there. DRB. Are there any openings on DRB? There are two openings on DRB. We desperately need people, please. And um, HPC doesn't have any openings, but I do would like to have you guys put um, Bud on that open seat because there is an open seat. Bud's a the an alternate. He's an alternate. He's the first alternate. Sorry, first alternate for what? And we oh, and he got extras. He'd be appointed. Yeah. So he yeah, could be appointed to the DRB instead. Is that what no, you're saying? Planning no. Planning commission. Planning commission has one opening if you don't appoint him. Joyce oh. Did, um, I didn't. Okay, that wasn't there to me. Got it. It wasn't part of the agenda anyway. It wasn't no. In there. Wasn't on there. So can we, we have to wait till next month. Is that what you're saying? We don't have to. I mean, I can just make him the alternate. There's an That's alternate he can just join, right? Yeah. yeah. What's the point of next time? So you'll see me again next month. All right, sounds good. Um, next is item 16, select board review and consider accepting bids for 40 Cary Road and the Mill Street properties that the town wants to sell. Uh, and the Mill Street, yeah. So do we make motions and stuff now? Do we act on this now? We can. Is that how it works? I was just asking. We can, Maybe we can, we can act on it now, and then um, I believe. So somebody can correct me, but I believe after we say we're going to sell it, this is our, this is the contract we're going to enter into. Then there's 30 days that someone so that's the public what the can object. Executive session is is when we talk about that. No, it's no, it's just it. warning the public that you're going to convey real estate once you make the decision. So is item 16 and the executive session the same Are they related? Topic? Are they related or are they different? I don't, I don't care. I would, to me, I'm just asking procedurally what. And it's the executive To discuss. To discuss the. Uh, purchase and sales contract. Yeah, purchase and sales contract. <coughs> same. Okay. So it's the same. But if we. We do it in open meeting, then what do we, we have to go to executive be, session? Right. Okay. The details, the details of the transaction. Don't they need to be public? Uh, the price? Uh, yeah, I would think it would need to be public. I don't know. Well, there's a contract. I mean, yeah, anything, you can absolutely anything can be public. public. Yeah, anything yeah. can be publicly done. So I'd say let's just, let's talk about it. Yeah, I agree. Let's do it separately? Yes, please. Yeah. So I make a motion that we enter into a purchase and sale agreement with Vermont Hots 
for the purchase of Town Parcel Mill Street number 24052-00010 for the purchase price of $45,900. Second. Discussion on this? Is that the tax assessed value or the appraised value? It's the appraised value. See the appraised value. Okay. Yeah, we don't have, there's not a tax assessed probably because the town owns it, so we don't pay tax. It hasn't been taxed. Tax assessed and appraisal. It's not current, but it's a grant list. It's a tax based appraisal. The appraisal, 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 appraisal was, sure. was developed by yes, Matt. We asked Matt to do it recently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. tax based appraisal. Yeah. Tax based appraisal. That's yeah. Yeah. There we go. not yeah. fair market That's, value appraisal. Yeah, right. It was, a, it was a tax, it was a parcel appraisal on cars from St. Joe. Parking lots from St. Joe that are recently. Which, so. yeah. Oh. I mean, it, it seems like a generous offer. It seemed for, like a great offer to me. That's why I, I, didn't, I didn't think comp it or anything else. It seemed like a, a great to jump. It seemed like their, well, their proposal is outstanding and their price is more than fair for that little piece of rock. So that's why I made the motion. So just for the sake of discussion, so we had, for the public who are here, uh, Vermont Huts came to us two or three months ago um, with a proposal for the um, Mill Street property. And that's part of what spurred this conversation about having the process for the con conveying of our real estate. Um, and then if anybody's interested, they provided a detailed Proposal of what the building they're proposing a building that would be a bike hostel and a bunch of other things um, in that site. Um, and so there's a lot of information about that. There's a sketch of the design, which is really great. Um, and they've been working, to my knowledge, they've been working already with um, Kristen, right? They've been working with you about uh, yeah. permitting and parking for my huts. Um, they have been talking to me about what they would need and and coming up with creative ideas, but it would ultimately be the DRB who would make that decision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all that stuff is irrelevant to uh, the sale. Yep. It's up to them yep. to get, do whatever is permitted. Yep. So, mm -hmm. uh, More discussion? So Danny made the motion. Do we have a second? I do. You have a second. We would like to see a market value appraisal of that. It's there talking about doing a very big project and we have a lot of other projects going on. Mm -hmm. They're, we're not doing this project. I, doing I know we're not doing it, but we have a lot and we're selling and have an opportunity to make a little more money off of that. I don't know if that's no. something to put up. Okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, we, can, we can vote our own ways, but that's, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a tax assessment versus a market value assessment. Well, it sounds like it was a bit of a market assessment if he was looking for comps in other towns. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Okay. Right, right, but he wasn't looking at sale price comps. He was looking at yeah. tax appraisal comps. Oh, tax appraisal comps. And sale price. And sale, the, recent sale. The, the email was what recent properties in St. John Gray had sold for that were existing parking lots. Mm -hmm. I think OP said it best at one of our previous, when they presented the first time, which the benefit of Harbrook having a multi, potentially multi-million dollar value building in downtown is worth more than the $45,000 that we're potentially mm -hmm. getting from They're the very small and usable parcel of hybrid wedge. The wheeler and dealer in me says never accept the first offer. <laughs> <laughs> and so to... I don't know if they'll sacrifice a half a million dollar This is the only yeah. offer since the building, the original building burned down in the 80s. Sure, and they have a, a lot invested in this proposal and this project, but... And we have no accommodations, ultimately, to offer to people on the LBR team. Hey, I want them to come and build their project here, for sure, absolutely. But, you know, I also want to see us... Okay. I think Kristen wants to contribute something. Can yeah. I just point out... That you really shouldn't be looking at the project that's going on this parcel because it's not approved by the DRB yeah, yet. Come on, and it could be right. they could put a condition on it that they don't find tenable and they wouldn't be able to build. Yeah. You really need to separate the sale from what they are proposing because they, I mean, if they wanted to before they buy it, they could go to the DRB and request their um, their purchase to do what I know they could. <laughs> They could do the they could do the um, application as an applicant and have the town be the landowner and see if it works. But if you're going to talk about it as though it's a benefit to the town, it really you can't you have to separate those out. Right. It's not it's not already in play. Yeah. It, it, 
and you have to defer to the DRB. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you for the discussion. Um, more discussion? So I'm going to call a vote. So all in favor of uh, selling the, um, what is it, Mill Street property to Vermont Huts, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. There we go. Motion carries. Um, next, does somebody want to talk about the property at 40 Carry Road. So I'd like to, to make a motion that we sell the property at 40 Carry Road. Is it 40? That's what I just it says here. 40 Carry Road to uh, Jeffrey B. Perry for the amount of $75,000. Second. So, discussion. Again, I just want to mention for the public that Jeff can come to us with this meeting. So, let me just, I'll comment on that. So I, I got his proposal on April 17th. Yeah. I called him on July 8th. I had a phone conversation with him. He said he wanted to keep his offer. I made the note on the top of his yep. original offer. So He called me today. Yeah. And asked me, guess what he asked me? When we're going to decide. Yeah. Because we were supposed to decide about the half ago. So he still is excited about the project and I think they'll do good things down there and well we probably also have to go to the DRB. <laughs> they yes, absolutely yes. gotta go to the DRB. Yes, yes. Everybody yes. does, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I agree. Just raining in there. Yeah. Before you get all all worked up. Yeah. Um all right. Well it's only fair to let the people of the public that are watching know because we let them know what the potential project the landowner that no, I was going to do for the hostel. So Jeff, um, Brian Perry and Sons Concrete and the trash businesses, they'd like to move their business off of Hopkins Hill, which will be a benefit to both them and the town because they will not be way up on the dirt road on that hill with all their trap traffic and equipment and such. So um, it too will be a benefit to everyone if it's uh, back on the tax base and functioning. And as I recall, part of his justification for a relatively low offer was there's a fair amount of cleanup that needs to be yeah, done there. There's a fair amount. Yeah, which it's a, it's a lot of weapons. Kristen thinks there's a fair amount of cleanup. In that house. Yeah. Yeah, there's probably asbestos in it. And it's, it does have. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's a fair amount of cleanup. Uh, the wetlands are actually pretty small, but that's all up to them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Asbestos included. All right, so we have a motion, we have a second. More discussion? All right, I'm going to call a vote. And all in favor of selling the property on uh, 40, Carry, 40 Carry Road to Jeff Perry, please say aye. 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 Can you tell him to call me? Pardon? Can you tell him to call me? I can do that. And he has to go talk to Kristen. Yeah. Was that in the motion? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Chris, Edward, call Chris, please. All right. So that's both. There we go. Uh, next, um, select board reports. Oh wait, before we dive into this, just the mechanics. So you, you guys, your office will work out the purchase and sale on both those. Uh, our attorney will. Right. Yeah, the attorney will. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if there's any questions, no, if there's anything you want in that contract, mm. you gotta let me know. Right. So that's what the executive session is. To discuss that. To discuss that. Or you can just you know, I'm, I'm good with the standard attorney purchase and sale. I have no caveats to either property that I want okay. to put on it. Uh, maybe someone else does, and that's fine. But okay. So we'll draft that purchase and sales agreement. I mean, we'll get well, to see the purchase and sale before it goes to that. Anybody else either want? Yeah. We, the board, will see that before it goes to that. Absolutely. And we need yeah. to approve the actual purchase and Absolutely. sale. Absolutely. Yeah. So this process will still yep. take a little while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take a couple concerned. of weeks. We also have a public comment period. Right. So. Which starts now, though, correct? But things like the deposit and stuff like right, that. Right, but just the standard, standard stuff. Okay. Because, so the clock ticks now on public comment, correct? Yeah. For 30 days. Yeah. So it'll take a couple of weeks to get the, this worked out. So at the next meeting, we'll approve the purchase and sale agreement. Correct. Then they obviously will have a copy, and then we just, the timeline is It'll be a is. closing at some point. Right, that's It'll all. It'll be on the purchase and sale. Yeah. Yep. Standard transaction. Yeah. Uh, Real estate transaction. 
Got it. Okay. And what properties that have been off the tax rolls for quite a long time mm -hmm. going back on. So that's cool. And being put to good use. Uh, DRB approving. Yeah. If they decide. Um, all right. So next, select board reports. Oh, I have one. Um, Tim happened to spot me at the Yellow Barn a couple weeks ago and we stopped and we, we get to do a walk around and um, uh, I don't know, maybe this, but I thought it would be nice if we all got to do a yeah, walk around down there. Yeah, we came by the other day and I was hoping we would get a kind of a early So when do you want to do that? Do we, uh, do you want to do it before? Two months. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I this, yeah. All right. No, I'd like to do it before that, but could we do it like late in the day or something? Well, we could do it right before our meeting. That would work. That would be good. Like the next couple five, of months would be pretty good with somebody in the dirt business. I don't know. That I mean, do people have interest and want to do it? Yeah. Yeah, I can usually make a plan. So, so yeah, before that, I select one. You've been, you been on the tour. I mean, is it ready now or should we wait? Yeah, we could go now. I mean, it's not done. We got a It's just that we should. Yeah, so let's just hold. Let's start a meeting down there. And then come yeah. Here. Yeah. Start a five. Yeah. Five five meeting there. That's fine. An hour. You five thirty. Five thirty. Five no, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. Five thirty minute meeting. I'm gonna stand in one spot. So we'll warn the regular. We'll warn the regular meeting for five thirty location at the Yellow Barn. We can actually hold the whole meeting there if you want. No. Well, I like to be on HGTV. Okay. Okay. So we'll just, we'll go down there. You know what, maybe it's not warning the meeting, maybe it's a special site visit. So it's like two events, so. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll, we'll okay. end that one, we'll start this one when we yes. get here. Got yeah. it. We'll warn it. Yeah. As a site visit. Yeah. Okay. I think that'd be good. Um, sorry, so that's my. Report. Report. Chamber Jeez. players are at the townhouse tonight. Excellent. They had to cancel Their before, season right? didn't get to start last week because of floods, floods but they right. start tonight when they go through the middle of August, Thursday nights in Hardwick. Great. Oh, how's the project? Uh, it's, um, they got the foundation in, but then they gotten sidetracked with uh, other stuff, so they're going to be returning in. Uh, early August, I'm told. Because hmm. they're also working on a job up at the Four Seas, and then the uh, apparently, according to the email um, from Jamie, the project manager, the some of the construction companies have been pulled away to do road work and other hmm. big stuff based on the flooding. So. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're anxious for them to come back and yeah, keep sure. going. Yeah. He's from Peachum, and Peachum got yeah. hammered in the yeah. last one. Yeah. Uh, any other reports, new business, old business? Um, I just have a couple. Uh, new business, the East Hardwick uh, Neighbor Association is having their East Hardwick Master Plan process. Uh, the meeting is July 29th at 5.30 at the Grange Hall. Um, they have done this before, but the um, this is the, why this is really important for East Hartwickians and probably people from Hart, anybody in Harvick to come to, is this is a part of the Better Connections uh, process. That maybe Tracy can speak. Sorry, you're here. <laughs> well, you guys I, don't, I don't know if you're going to speak on that. Never pay. You just have to pay. It's good that we're making this happen. Um, yeah. This is perfect. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's a really important meeting. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in East Harvick, and um, I would be great to have a lot of different feedback about it. Do you want me to say? I don't know if there's anything. Uh, that was pretty the good. The details so of the meeting, maybe. The details of the meeting. So this is where it's a village supper, late, late supper, and a lot of discussion. Um, this is a uh, part of the development of a comprehensive plan for um, uh, what the sort of uh, vision. Uh, it's a visioning exercise, basically, as part of our uh, development of a plan for revitalization of the village of East Hardwick. Um, it's, uh, we're working with some consultants through a program. We got a grant from the state. This is a 
uh, a grant that is supported by both uh, VTRANS, ACCD, and um, ANR. So we have these partners from state government that are all working with us on this, which is really cool because they're on the ground seeing the situation and they're all, they've all got their connections. So the, the ultimate goal is to come out with a plan that prioritizes some things that people in East Hardwood would, would like to see happen in the village and to help us figure out how, how to make those things happen, you know, where funding sources could be um, gotten and everything else. So this supper is for basically people who live in East Hardwick or own property in East Hardwick and want to be part of this conversation. We can't come to the supper if we're not from East Hardwick. <laughs> you can't miss 12 dollars We're just not interested in your opinion, so we, no, just joking. No, anyway, is that, is that yeah, so that it's the great. 29th, Monday the 29th, yep. five o'clock, Caledonia Grange number nine. And then oh, 530. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. And then the only other new and old business is, I, we've already thanked a lot of people tonight. Um, I also want to thank the historic neighbor to neighbor group. There's a ton of organizations that help with the flood. Um, they're still open. The crisis center is still open. They like keep posting about cleaning supplies. And, like, there's so many in the civic. Everyone's, many, many people are, uh, are working hard in town to help others. One thing, we don't need to get into it tonight, but one thing I've been thinking a lot about is it's great that we had the emergency shelter open. Um, Hazen for, you know, if your bridge is out in East Harvick or if there's major flooding in East Harvick, is pretty hard to get to, especially if you're in the DNL area. So I'm thinking, I just want to, I just want to say we don't need to plan it out tonight. But I, wanna, but I want to, <laughs> but I just want to think about key locations in town, whether it's Mackville, yeah. East Hardwick, um, over on Hopkins Hill, where there may be other neighbors or organizations like the Grange that will open their doors, and maybe, maybe um, the neighbor to neighbor group is the one that organizes that. So that way, it's not like just. I mean, a lot of neighbors in East Harbor posted on their Facebook, "You're welcome to come to my house," but it's not an or like it's not really an organized thing, and only so many people are seeing that. So that's one of the what's one of the practical things I'm hoping that we can think about, and it sounds like we already are. Um, so yeah, we could put that in our plan. Yeah. Can I? Can I? That, that church that sits in the corner, that's a Red Cross certified church uh, site, and it was identified for <coughs> as at least one section that's outside this. And then we also, Neighbors Chambers doing is working on trying to identify with VCRD, yep. trying to identify all those different pieces. Great. Sorry, I didn't No, 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 it's that. awesome. It's awesome. I assume you were already working on it. Yeah, we're making money with the public be better next time. Opie, did you talk about it at all? Yeah. 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 You missed it. Yes. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's going to be closed. It's going to be open. <laughs> I can do it for you. <laughs> the wheels are in motion. The machine's already up there, so. <laughs> We're all good there? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. You want to just say again? No, I don't need to know. Yeah. I know. I just want to make sure. Uh, that no, it's great. Again, so. So yeah, the machine's already up there. Yeah, I'll, I just want to add something in new business. Are yeah, go ahead. We're yeah. there. Okay. Um, I need select board approval to um, explore uh, several more buyouts. Since this last flood, uh, we've been approached by several property owners that are reconsidering their location and want to uh, explore the buyout program. <clears throat> And we won't um, engage with the landowners until we have permission from the select board to do it. So we have to have the so, uh, Is there funding? No. Uh, we, uh, it, I, yes. I, don't, I don't care. At this still point, funding, right? Yes. Yeah, but yeah. at this point, we need to be, we need to engage anyone that wishes to engage. We engage. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I mean, if someone asks, one person asks, anybody that asks should get treated the same way. I agree. And the process will filter out those that. Mm -hmm. All four properties that we bought out were all would have been. Yeah, they were there. Yeah. Absolutely. If they had to rebuild, they would have. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, I mean, I just think it's the right thing to do if yeah. one person asks. It's mitigating see. risk. Yeah. yeah. And it's ultimately up to the, the taxpayers to their taxpayers, right? Yeah. It's not up to us. And so, then you know, your, your house is a, no. There's yeah. several locations where folks want to stay where they are, and there's also funds 
um, to elevate their properties, elevate their homes, and we want to explore those funding sources. So do we have your blessing for that as well? Oh yeah. 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 We had at least one good example of that right on Route 14 South on the left there. There was that yeah. home Steve that was Rose. raised. But yeah. Steve Burns yeah. was good shape, a right? success. And that was minimal. Yeah. I can tell you if I'd have done that, it would have been another doopy higher than that. <laughs> Just because that's the way I roll. Yeah. Uh, but it, it did. It, it worked fine. It worked very yeah. well. Kristen, you're aching to say something. Yeah, she's she's feeding me information. <laughs> you can I, I, I texted you. I, 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 you can say it, or I'm going to adjourn the meeting. So no, um, I would. Uh, last year, when we had the flood occur, we um, waived zoning fees and recording fees. I'm not asking for recording fees this time. I'm asking for just zoning fees. Yeah. Those two people who talked to you um, earlier, I missed them. They came and talked to me, and they left with permits, which will cost some money. We do charge when people are in the floodplain um, minor amounts, but um, so, any amount or amount I can take oh. off there at the request. Um, you're gonna waive that. Why would you do the recording? Thing too? I wasn't gonna speak for you. <laughs> yeah, Dennis so, does it all the time. Kristen, just to just to clarify what you're asking, are you asking that we <coughs> wait? So, but we wait. So last time what we did is we waived it for it was like three months or something. Yeah. No, it ended up being a year. But we ended up doing, you know, we ended up. Um, it's it takes a long time to get everybody yeah. to do their forms. So I make a motion that we waive the application and the recording fees for flood impacted for properties. flood impacted properties for one year. Okay. Second. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, that's everyone. So motion carries. Thanks for bringing that up. Anything else? So, just one, I'll say one thing about the flood is I, fortunately or unfortunately, got to travel a lot in the last week, working on flood damage, and uh, it's just it's saddening to see the folks that were impacted so dramatically last year be the same exact folks. Mm -hmm. that were like North End of Barry, a lot of those folks had just gotten back in there and just gotten settled. I mean, literally, the whole community, you know, the whole the whole other town again is. Mm -hmm right back in there, you know, they're mucking stuff out. And to see those folks doing that work, and it's just terrible. And so, I mean, we had it rough here in Harvard, but there's, you can, people have to remember, this started in Texas and ended in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of folks that are, that are in, experiencing the same climate change or whatever you want to call it. Name it a dozen different things. but. It's a serious thing. It seems good that we're on. We seem to be on it. Everyone talks about Harvard being on it. And I think David and Kristen and Tracy and Amanda and all of them, everyone. Yeah. So maybe, you know. Yeah. It seems to me when anybody comes here to talk to us about it, they tell us how good our staff is. Which is a great thing. It's a source of pride. Don't there hear that every day. Just saying. That's Not true. Today's world. <laughs> That's true. Yes. So thank yeah. you, everyone. All right. On that note, I think it's a good note to adjourn. So thank you, everyone.